El día de hoy estarás aprendiendo inglés con historias interactivas. Escucha atentamente esta historia en inglés y luego responde las preguntas que verás al final. No te preocupes si no logras entender toda la historia. Lo importante es que puedas llevar el hilo de lo que está sucediendo. En esta clase podrás aprender mucho nuevo vocabulario, entonación y pronunciación. Presta mucha atención, así que let's begin. Once upon a time, there were three laboratory mice named Max, Molly, and Marty. They had lived their entire lives in a sterile, white lab cage and were used for various experiments by the scientists. One day, the three mice stumbled upon a shocking discovery they were being used to test the side effects of a new drug. Horrified by this revelation, the mice began to plot their escape. Listen to me, guys. I just discovered something that will change everything. What is it, Max? What have you found? I found a newspaper article about the experiments being conducted on us. They're testing the side effects of a new drug, and we're the test subjects. No, this can't be happening. We have to escape, now. Wait, let's not jump to conclusions. Maybe this is just a misunderstanding. Maybe they're just testing something harmless. No, Molly. This is real. We're being used as lab rats. We have to get out of here before it's too late. We can't just sit here and let them control us. We have to fight for our freedom. I... I don't know if I can do this. I don't want to risk my life. You have to, Molly. You don't see it? Our lives are at stake. We have to be brave, we have to be strong. We have to work together. We have to make a stand, right now. We have to show them that we won't let them control us. We have to fight for our lives, for our freedom. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll fight with you guys. That's the spirit, Molly. We'll do this together. We'll be free, together. They knew they had to act fast, so they worked tirelessly to gnaw away at the wires of their cage. After several long nights of work, they finally succeeded in creating a small hole in the cage. Okay, this is it. We have to make a run for it. I can hear the footsteps of the scientists getting closer. We have to act fast. We've been planning this escape for weeks. We can do this. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. The three rats burst out of their cage and run down the aisle of the laboratory. Scientists and technicians shout in alarm and chase after them. We have to find a way out of here. This way. I found an open door. The rats race towards the door, dodging obstacles and evading the scientists' grasp. They slip through the door and into a dark hallway. We made it. We're out of the lab. But we're not out of the building yet. We have to keep moving. The rats scamper through the hallways, their hearts racing with adrenaline. They turn corners and jump over obstacles, determined to find their way to freedom. There's an exit. I see the sky. We're almost there. The rats burst through the exit door and into the bright sunlight. They race across the pavement, dodging cars and avoiding capture. We did it. We're free. We're not free yet. We have to keep running. The rats dart into an alley, panting and sweating. They look back at the laboratory, their hearts filled with triumph and relief. We made it. We're truly free. The rats huddle together, savoring their hard-won freedom. They know they have a long journey ahead, but they are ready to face whatever challenges come their way. They are free at last. The mice scampered out of the lab and into the city streets of New York. They were awestruck by the sights and sounds of the bustling metropolis. They encountered towering skyscrapers, busy streets, and even a busy subway system. However, their journey was far from over. The mice still had to avoid the scientists and find a safe place to hide. They scurried through alleyways, 
climbed up fire escapes, and even hid in the drains to avoid detection. Their luck ran out when they were cornered by a group of cats on a rooftop. Look at these little guys, trying to play hide and seek in the city. Yeah, they should have stayed in the lab where they belonged. They had it made with those human masters of theirs. Made? You call being poked and prodded with needles made? Well, at least you had a soft bed to sleep on, and all the cheese you could eat. We'd rather go hungry and live in the wild than be lab rats any longer. Ha. Huh. Good luck with that. You'll be singing a different tune when you run into us cats on the street. Let us go. Please we just want to be happy here in this city. Oh, how cute. You think you can stand up to us? We rule the city, not you guys. We're not looking for a fight. We just want to live our lives on our own terms, just like you cats. Well, that may be true, but we're not the ones who have to hide in the shadows. We're the ones who bask in the sun, and you're the ones who hide in the dark. We'll find our own light, even if we have to steal it from the stars. Stole it. You're funny. But remember, the city belongs to us, and you're just visitors, and it's timey to say goodbye kids. Just as the cats were about to pounce, Max had an idea. He climbed to the top of a nearby antenna and sent out an SOS signal with a piece of tin foil. To their surprise, a group of pigeons came to their rescue, carrying the mice to safety. The pigeons showed the mice the ropes of life on the streets and even introduced them to a kind-hearted rat named Ralph who offered to help them find a permanent home. With Ralph's help, the mice were able to build a new life for themselves in the city. They were finally free from the lab and the experiments and were able to experience the excitement and adventures of city life. From that day on, Max, Molly, and Marty were known as the three brave mice of New York and their escape from the lab was the stuff of legend among the city's animals. Who are the main characters of the story? A. Cats B. Mice C. Humans The right answer is B. Mice. Why did the mice decide to escape from the laboratory? A. They wanted to explore the world. B. They were being used for experiments. C. They wanted to find better living conditions. The right answer is B. They were being used for experiments. How did the mice manage to escape from the laboratory? A by using their intelligence. B. By teaming up. C. By getting help from an unexpected ally. The right answer is B. By teaming up. What obstacles did the mice face during their escape? A. Traps set by the humans. B. Other animals in the city. C. A lack of food and shelter. The right answer is B other animals in the city. What emotions did the mice experience during their escape? A. Hope B. Fear C. Excitement The right answer is A. Hope. Once upon a time, there were three laboratory mice named Max, Molly, and Marty. They had lived their entire lives in a sterile, white lab cage and were used for various experiments by the scientists. One day, the three mice stumbled upon a shocking discovery they were being used to test the side effects of a new drug. Horrified by this revelation, the mice began to plot their escape. Listen to me guys. I just discovered something that will change everything. What is it Max? What have you found? I found a newspaper article about the experiments being conducted on us. They're testing the side effects of a new drug, and we're the test subjects. No. This can't be happening. We have to escape, now. Wait, let's not jump to conclusions. Maybe this is just a misunderstanding. Maybe they're just testing something harmless. No, Molly. This is real. We're being used as lab rats. 
We have to get out of here before it's too late. We can't just sit here and let them control us. We have to fight for our freedom. I... I don't know if I can do this. I don't want to risk my life. You have to, Molly. You don't see it? Our lives are at stake. We have to be brave, we have to be strong. We have to work together. We have to make a stand, right now. We have to show them that we won't let them control us. We have to fight for our lives, for our freedom. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll fight with you guys. That's the spirit, Molly. We'll do this together. We'll be free, together. They knew they had to act fast, so they worked tirelessly to gnaw away at the wires of their cage. After several long nights of work, they finally succeeded in creating a small hole in the cage. Okay, this is it. We have to make a run for it. I can hear the footsteps of the scientists getting closer. We have to act fast. We've been planning this escape for weeks. We can do this. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. The three rats burst out of their cage and run down the aisle of the laboratory. Scientists and technicians shout in alarm and chase after them. We have to find a way out of here. This way. I found an open door. The rats race towards the door, dodging obstacles and evading the scientists' grasp. They slip through the door and into a dark hallway. We made it. We're out of the lab. But we're not out of the building yet. We have to keep moving. The rats scamper through the hallways, their hearts racing with adrenaline. They turn corners and jump over obstacles, determined to find their way to freedom. There's an exit. I see the sky. We're almost there. The rats burst through the exit door and into the bright sunlight. They race across the pavement, dodging cars and avoiding capture. We did it. We're free. We're not free yet. We have to keep running. The rats dart into an alley, panting and sweating. They look back at the laboratory, their hearts filled with triumph and relief. We made it. We're truly free. The rats huddle together, savoring their hard-won freedom. They know they have a long journey ahead, but they are ready to face whatever challenges come their way. They are free at last. The mice scampered out of the lab and into the city streets of New York. They were awestruck by the sights and sounds of the bustling metropolis. They encountered towering skyscrapers, busy streets, and even a busy subway system. However, their journey was far from over. The mice still had to avoid the scientists and find a safe place to hide. They scurried through alleyways, climbed up fire escapes, and even hid in the drains to avoid detection. Their luck ran out when they were cornered by a group of cats on a rooftop. Look at these little guys, trying to play hide-and-seek in the city. Yeah, they should have stayed in the lab where they belonged. They had it made with those human masters of theirs. Made? You call being poked and prodded with needles made? Well, at least you had a soft bed to sleep on, and all the cheese you could eat. We'd rather go hungry and live in the wild than be lab rats any longer. Ha. Huh. Good luck with that. You'll be singing a different tune when you run into us cats on the street. Let us go. Please we just want to be happy here in this city. Oh, how cute. You think you can stand up to us? We rule the city, not you guys. We're not looking for a fight. We just want to live our lives on our own terms, just like you cats. Well, that may be true, but we're not the ones who have to hide in the shadows. We're the ones who bask in the sun, and you're the ones who hide in the dark. We'll find our own light, even if we have to steal it from the stars. Stole it. You're funny. But remember, the city belongs to us, and you're just visitors, and it's timey to say goodbye kids. Just as the cats were about to pounce, Max had an idea. He climbed to the top of a nearby antenna and sent out an SOS signal with a piece of tin foil. To their surprise, a group of pigeons came to their rescue, carrying the mice to safety. 
The pigeons showed the mice the ropes of life on the streets and even introduced them to a kind-hearted rat named Ralph who offered to help them find a permanent home. With Ralph's help, the mice were able to build a new life for themselves in the city. They were finally free from the lab and the experiments and were able to experience the excitement and adventures of city life. From that day on, Max, Molly, and Marty were known as the three brave mice of New York and their escape from the lab was the stuff of legend among the city's animals. Escucha esta historia en inglés y español y aprenderás mucho vocabulario. It was a normal day in college. I was in my literature class when she walked in. Era un día normal en la universidad. Estaba en mi clase de literatura cuando ella entró. She was the new professor with a beautiful face and a contagious smile. I immediately fell in love with her. She was older than me, but that didn't matter to me. Era la nueva profesora, con un rostro hermoso y una sonrisa contagiosa. Inmediatamente me enamoré de ella. Ella era mayor que yo, pero eso no me importaba. As the semester went on, I noticed that she also seemed to show some interest in me. Sometimes she would give me special smiles or extra time to talk about a topic. A medida que avanzaba el semestre, me di cuenta de que ella también parecía mostrar cierto interés en mí. A veces me regalaba sonrisas especiales o tiempo extra para hablar de un tema. However, it was never clear and I was confused. I tried to get closer to her, but it was difficult with the power dynamic of her being my professor. I couldn't help but feel like she was out of my league. But I couldn't shake my feelings for her. Sin embargo, nunca estuvo claro y yo estaba confundido. Traté de acercarme a ella, pero fue difícil con la dinámica de poder de que ella fuera mi profesora. No pude evitar sentir que ella estaba fuera de mi liga. Pero no podía deshacerme de mis sentimientos por ella. One day, after class, she asked me to stay behind and talk. My heart was pounding as I sat down in front of her. Un día, Después de clase, me pidió que me quedara y conversáramos. Mi corazón latía con fuerza cuando me senté frente a ella. She looked at me with a serious expression and said, I know you have feelings for me, but I am your professor and it is not appropriate for us to be anything more. Me miró con una expresión seria y dijo, Sé que sientes algo por mí, pero soy tu profesora y no es apropiado que seamos algo más. I was crushed, but I understood. I thanked her for being honest and left the room. I couldn't help but feel disappointed, but I knew that it was for the best. Estaba destrozado, pero lo entendí. Le di las gracias por ser honesto y salí de la habitación. No pude evitar sentirme decepcionado, pero sabía que era lo mejor. From that day on, I tried to keep my distance and focus on my studies. But I couldn't help but think about her every day. Even though nothing could ever happen between us, My love for her would always remain. A partir de ese día, traté de mantener la distancia y concentrarme en mis estudios. Pero no pude evitar pensar en ella todos los días. Aunque nunca podría pasar nada entre nosotros, mi amor por ella siempre permanecería. It was a week before the final exam and the class was preparing for the last review. I was feeling confident and was ready for the final test, but then something unexpected happened. Faltaba una semana para el examen final y la clase se estaba preparando para la última revisión. Me sentía confiado y estaba listo para la prueba final, pero luego sucedió algo inesperado. The other students had left the classroom and I was the only one left. My professor and I were alone in the classroom and I couldn't help but feel nervous and excited at the same time. She started to talk about the final exam, but then she paused and looked at me with a serious expression, she said. Empezó a hablar sobre el examen final, pero luego hizo una pausa y me miró con una expresión seria, dijo. I know you have feelings for me and I can't ignore it anymore. I have feelings for you too, but I can't do anything about it. I was shocked and didn't know what to say. I just looked at her and couldn't believe what she just said. Sé que sientes algo por mí y no puedo ignorarlo más. Yo también siento algo por ti, pero no puedo hacer nada al respecto. Me sorprendió y no supe qué decir. Solo la miré. Y no podía creer lo que acababa de decir. We talked for a while about the situation and about our feelings. It was a difficult conversation, but I was happy that finally, the truth was out. We both knew that nothing could happen between us, but at least we were honest with each other. Hablamos un rato sobre la situación y sobre nuestros sentimientos, 
Fue una conversación difícil pero estaba feliz de que finalmente se supiera la verdad. Ambos sabíamos que nada podía pasar entre nosotros, pero al menos éramos honestos el uno con el otro. From that day on, our relationship changed. It was still professional, but we both knew what we felt for each other. A partir de ese día nuestra relación cambió. Seguía siendo profesional, pero ambos sabíamos lo que sentíamos el uno por el otro. It was hard to keep the distance and focus on our studies, but we managed to do it. I will always remember that day as the day when my feelings were finally acknowledged. Fue difícil mantener la distancia y concentrarnos en nuestros estudios, pero lo logramos. Siempre recordaré ese día como el día en que finalmente se reconocieron mis sentimientos. After my professor and I had that conversation, I couldn't help but think about her even more. I wanted to be around her all the time, and I started to show up to class early, stay late, and even asked her for extra help outside of class. At first, she seemed to be happy to see me and we would have great conversations, but soon she started to pull away. Después de que mi profesora y yo tuvimos esa conversación, no pude evitar pensar en ella aún más. Quería estar cerca de ella todo el tiempo, y comencé a llegar temprano a clase, quedarme hasta tarde e incluso pedirle ayuda adicional fuera de clase. At first, she seemed to be happy to see me and we would have great conversations, but soon she started to pull away. Al principio, parecía estar feliz de verme y teníamos excelentes conversaciones, pero pronto comenzó a alejarse. I could tell that my constant presence was making her uncomfortable and she began to avoid me. I didn't understand why, I thought she had feelings for me too. I started to become more persistent and I would try to talk to her every chance I got. I couldn't help it, I was in love with her. Me di cuenta de que mi presencia constante la estaba incomodando y comenzó a evitarme. No entendía por qué, pensé que ella también sentía algo por mí. Empecé a ser más persistente e intentaba hablar con ella cada vez que podía. No pude evitarlo, estaba enamorado de ella. As the weeks went on, my professor became more and more distant. She started to avoid me completely and would always have an excuse not to meet with me. I was confused and hurt, I didn't know what I did wrong. Me di cuenta de que mi presencia constante la estaba incomodando y comenzó a evitarme. No entendía por qué, pensé que ella también sentía algo por mí. Empecé a ser más persistente e intentó hablar con ella cada vez que podía. No pude evitarlo, estaba enamorado de ella. One day, I finally mustered up the courage to ask her what was wrong. She looked at me with a sad expression and said, I can't be around you anymore, you're making it impossible for me to do my job. I care about you, but I can't let my feelings for you interfere with my responsibilities as your professor. Un día, finalmente me armé de valor para preguntarle qué le pasaba. Ella me miró con una expresión triste y dijo, ya no puedo estar cerca de ti, me estás haciendo imposible hacer mi trabajo. Me preocupo por ti, pero no puedo dejar que mis sentimientos por ti interfieran. Con mis responsabilidades como su profesor. I was devastated. I realized that my actions had driven her away and I had lost her. I apologized for my behavior and promised to give her space. From that day on, I avoided her as much as possible and focused on my studies. Estaba devastado. Me di cuenta de que mis acciones la habían alejado y la había perdido. Me disculpé por mi comportamiento y prometí darle su espacio. A partir de ese día, la evité tanto como pude y me concentré en mis estudios. The final exam came and went, and soon the semester was over. I graduated and moved on with my life, but I could never forget my professor. She had been the one that got away, and I knew that I would always love her. El examen final llegó y se fue y pronto termino el semestre. Me gradué y seguí con mi vida, pero nunca pude olvidar a mi profesor. Ella había sido la que se escapó, y yo sabía que siempre la amaría. I learned that love and infatuation can be blind and it's important to respect boundaries and the other person's feelings. It was difficult, but I had to accept that nothing could happen between us and move on with my life. Aprendí que el amor y el enamoramiento pueden ser ciegos y que es importante respetar los límites y los sentimientos de la otra persona. Fue difícil pero tuve que aceptar que nada podía pasar entre nosotros y seguir con mi vida. Ahora ha llegado el momento de que escuches la misma historia solamente en inglés, ya sabiendo lo que se estuvo diciendo. Presta mucha atención 
e intente entenderlo todo. It was a normal day in college. I was in my literature class when she walked in. She was the new professor, with a beautiful face and a contagious smile. I immediately fell in love with her. She was older than me, but that didn't matter to me. As the semester went on, I noticed that she also seemed to show some interest in me. Sometimes she would give me special smiles or extra time to talk about a topic. However, it was never clear and I was confused. I tried to get closer to her, but it was difficult with the power dynamic of her being my professor. I couldn't help but feel like she was out of my league. But I couldn't shake my feelings for her. One day, after class, she asked me to stay behind and talk. My heart was pounding as I sat down in front of her. She looked at me with a serious expression and said, I know you have feelings for me, but I am your professor and it is not appropriate for us to be anything more. I was crushed, but I understood. I thanked her for being honest and left the room. I couldn't help but feel disappointed, but I knew that it was for the best. From that day on, I tried to keep my distance and focus on my studies. But I couldn't help but think about her every day. Even though nothing could ever happen between us, my love for her would always remain. It was a week before the final exam and the class was preparing for the last review. I was feeling confident and was ready for the final test, but then something unexpected happened. The other students had left the classroom and I was the only one left. My professor and I were alone in the classroom, and I couldn't help but feel nervous and excited at the same time. She started to talk about the final exam, but then she paused and looked at me with a serious expression, she said. I know you have feelings for me and I can't ignore it anymore, I have feelings for you too but I can't do anything about it. I was shocked and didn't know what to say, I just looked at her and couldn't believe what she just said. We talked for a while about the situation and about our feelings, it was a difficult conversation but I was happy that finally, the truth was out. We both knew that nothing could happen between us, but at least we were honest with each other. From that day on, our relationship changed, it was still professional but we both knew what we felt for each other. It was hard to keep the distance and focus on our studies, but we managed to do it. I will always remember that day as the day when my feelings were finally acknowledged. After my professor and I had that conversation, I couldn't help but think about her even more. I wanted to be around her all the time, and I started to show up to class early, stay late, and even asked her for extra help outside of class. At first, she seemed to be happy to see me and we would have great conversations, but soon she started to pull away. I could tell that my constant presence was making her uncomfortable and she began to avoid me. I didn't understand why, I thought she had feelings for me too. I started to become more persistent and I would try to talk to her every chance I got. I couldn't help it, I was in love with her. As the weeks went on, my professor became more and more distant. She started to avoid me completely and would always have an excuse not to meet with me. I was confused and hurt, I didn't know what I did wrong. One day, I finally mustered up the courage to ask her what was wrong. She looked at me with a sad expression and said, I can't be around you anymore, you're making it impossible for me to do my job. I care about you, but I can't let my feelings for you interfere with my responsibilities as your professor. I was devastated. I realized that my actions had driven her away and I had lost her. I apologized for my behavior and promised to give her space. From that day on, I avoided her as much as possible and focused on my studies. The final exam came and went, and soon the semester was over. I graduated and moved on with my life, but I could never forget my professor. She had been the one that got away, and I knew that I would always love her. I learned that love and infatuation can be blind and it's important to respect boundaries and the other person feelings. It was difficult but I had to accept that nothing could happen between us and move on with my life. Y bueno amigos, hasta aquí la clase del día de hoy. Ya saben que si les gustó, le pueden dar like al video y suscribirse al canal. Estamos trayendo muchas clases como esta todos los días, así que van a querer estar suscritos al canal. Recuerda que si te gusta este método y otros métodos que tenemos aquí, te recomiendo que adquieras nuestro curso Open Your Mouth English Course por tan solo $29.99 con centavos en precio de descuento por motivos de lanzamiento. Toda la información acerca de este curso se encuentra en el primer comentario. Yo soy su profesor Eduardo, nos vemos pronto.